Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with WebGPU graphics programming. In the last video, I explained how to build a 3D cylinder with lighting effect. In this video, I will show you how to add the lighting effect to a 3D cone. Here, we will use Git tool to clone the source code used in the last video. Here is the download link at the GitHub repository. From this link, you can download all the source code used in the last video. Now open a command prompt window and run the following command git clone paste this link this will generate a webgpu 20 folder on your local machine this folder contains all the source code used in the last video now we want to change the name of webgpu 20 folder to gpu 21 rename webg21 and cd into it at this point we are going to start Visual Studio Code with the command code period. This is Visual Studio Code interface. Okay, we can close this welcome page. Here contains all the source code used in the last video. Now open a new terminal window and run the following command npm install to restore NPM packages used in this project. Okay, finished. Now all the installed packages are stored in the node modules folder. As discussed previously, in order to add the lighting effect to a 3D object, we have to know the normal vectors at each vertex on the surface of that 3D object. Now let's add the normal vector data to the vertex data of our cone. From the SRC folder, open vertexdata.ks file. Here we need to add a new function called cone data here. This is the code for this new function. Here we consider a general cone shape. That is, it has a different top and the bottom radius, as shown here. We divide this cone into many slices to form a surface grid like this. The unit cell is formed by the S and the I plus ones slice lines. We will use the cylindric coordinate system to get the position on the cone surface by calling the cone position function from the mathfunk.ts file. For the S slice, we have four different vertices, P0, P1, P2, and P3. Here, P0 and P1 are calculated using the top and the bottom uh, radii, respectively. Here, R top and R bottom. While for the vertex P2 and P3, they are located at the center axis with radius being equal to zero. You can see we set the radius to zero to calculate these two uh, vertex uh, position. In order to uh, create vertex and normal vector data, we need to perform surface triangulation to this unit cell. This unit grid consists of six vertices and the three faces, the top face, bottom face, and outer face here. The top and the bottom face are already triangle, while for the outer surface, it is a quadrilateral shape that needs to be divided into two triangles, as shown here. Here you can see for top and bottom faces, we have three vertices here, because they have one triangle, top and the bottom. We have three vertices here. And for the outer surface, they have two triangles, so they have six vertices. To calculate the normal vectors of this cone, we need to treat 
each face differently. For the top face, the normal vector point up, so its normal vector is 0, 1, 0. You can see here, for top face, three vertices have the same normal vector, this is 0, 1, 0. For bottom face, the normal vector point down, so its normal vector is 0, minus uh, 0. So you can see this three vertices has the same uh, normal vector, that is 0, minus 1, and 0. While for the outer face, it is a general uh, correlator, as we discussed uh, before, for such a uh, shape, its normal vector can be computed using the cross product of these two diagonal lines, P0, P5, and P4, and P1. These are two diagonal lines. Here you can see, first uh, we get this line, P5 and P0, and, and another one is P4 and P1. We take the cross product, these two lines. Then we do normalize this line to get the normal vector. So for these outer phases, we have six vertices. They have the same normal vector, that is CP0, CP1, and CP2. Uh, not also, this function returns two variables. One is vertex data, and another is normal data. Now we can save this file and close it. Next, we need to make uh, some changes to the index.html file. From dist folder, open this file. First, we need to change the title, the 20 to 21, because this is the 20th first video series. Now, we also need to change the h1 title from a cylinder to cone with lighting. Here we need to replace the parameter for the uh, cylinder by the parameter for the cone here, R in, R out, but we can keep height and n. So we just need to replace these two parameters to R top and R bottom. So we keep height and n here. These parameters allows you to specify the radius, height, and a slice of division for the cone. Now we can save this file. Next, we need to make some changes to the main.ts file. From src folder, open the main.ts file. We need to replace the contents by new code. Since most code for render pipeline and render pass have been already included in the light.ts file. So here, main.ts file becomes very simple. First, we introduce the create shape with light uh, function from the uh, light.ts file. Then, we introduce the light input interface from cedars.ts file. And then we introduce the cone data function from vertex data.ts file. Next, we create a new function called create shape. It takes light input interface and a cone parameter as its input arguments. Inside this function, we call the cone data function to get a vertex and a normal data. Then we call a create a shape with light function to create the cone with lighting effect. And next here, we define the default input parameter for the light and the cone. And we call the create shape function to create a 3D cone with default lighting effect. This part of the code allows the user to recreate the cone with different lighting effect by changing the input parameters. Now we finish the modification to the main.ts file. We can now save this file. Up to now we have finished all the programming. We can run the following command on terminal window npm run prod to bound our test.
TypeScript uh, file in production mode. Okay, the bound file is created successfully. Now we can click the go live uh, link to open Chrome Canary to view our Chrome shape. Here is a red cone with lighting effect displayed on this page. We can make some changes to the input parameters. For example, if we set the diffuse and the specular coefficient to zero and increase the MB coefficient to one, then click this retrow array. You can see we get a cone with MB light only. You can see the cone looks flat and no 3D effect. Now let's add the diffuse light and the spectral light back. Again, eight. 0.4 for example and change the ambient coefficient to a small number. We can also change the object color from red to green and also we can change the specular uh, color from white to yellow and we can also change the cone parameter for example the top radius we set to zero then click the redraw button, we get a real green cone with lighting effect. Now we have completed this example. In next video, I will show you how to create a 3D torus with lighting effect. Most of the examples presented in this video series are based on my recently published book, Practical Web GPU Graphics. From this link, drsu.net.com. You can see the details about this book. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video series. From this link, you can download the source code used in this uh, video series. I also created a live demo at this link. This demo shows the live results by running the example projects presented in this video series. I will end this video here. See you next time. Bye.